Hello students, welcome to Affairs Cloud. My name is Vikas. We have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application, you will be able to easily log in using your Gmail ID. Once you have logged in, you will be redirected to this page where you will be getting this UI and there will be option for home, all courses, my courses and doubt section. On this application, you will be getting multiple PDFs, multiple content on daily basis that will be enhancing your learning. Our first segment is daily current affairs. We make sure to provide you current affairs on daily basis in both English as well as in Hindi content. The PDFs for the same are uploaded on our application. And apart from this, we also make sure to provide you with quizzes that will help you to revise the content after you have gone through the PDF. Next comes our weekly content. The content is also provided in both English as well as in Hindi. And here we also make sure to provide you quiz also of that past week's current affairs that will be enhancing your learning as it is a compilation of the important topics, important MCQ questions for the last week. Similar for the monthly, the PDFs are very important. They provide you insights of various topics as well as we also make sure to provide you the quiz of monthly questions that are very important for learning. Next, we also provide you with important PIB articles on daily basis so that you can go through these particles and have an insight about that particular topic. Not just this, we also make sure to provide you important events that are happening globally and make sure to give you the right analysis. One of the most important segment of our application is that we make sure to provide you with the correct exam analysis. When you are having exam, we make sure to provide you with the previous year questions so that the student can go through the exam pattern and the syllabus and can prepare the exam accordingly based on the pattern. After the exam, we also make sure to provide you with the exam analysis. Then for the students who are preparing for state exams, they will be also beneficial here as we will make sure to provide with state wise current affairs for them. Apart from this, we also make sure to cover the topic wise current affairs such as your national affairs, government schemes, international affairs, banking and finance, economy and businesses as these are the topics from which the examiner definitely asks the question and these are covered on the monthly basis. So friends, do check our application. It will be a one stop solution for learning. Apart from this friends, Carrier Scout is hiring. We are looking for candidates for subject matter experts in quants reasoning and English and also we are looking for a content creator for current affairs topic on daily basis, weekly basis and monthly basis. There is also an opening for a person who can translate the English content into Hindi. If you want to apply, you can scan the code here for further details or you can go to the description and click the link below. These positions are available both in full time and freelance for serious candidates. Also students, you can use code VIKAS10 that will give you extra 10% discount on the courses that you will purchase. Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing important current affairs for 11th of April. The session will be quite interesting. So do pay attention till the end. You will be learning multiple things that will be beneficial for your preparation. So let's start. First is European Union and which country partner to promote startup collaboration on recycling of electric vehicle batteries under TTC. What is this TTC? First of all, it is Trade and Technology Council. So first of all, remember it is European Union and our India. Correct. They have partnered to promote startup collaboration for the recycling of electric vehicle batteries under this TTC. And this is India. EU. TTC that is India European Union Trade and Technology Council here you can see EU and India they together launched an expression of interest and it is for the startups that are working in the electric vehicle battery recycling and it is to take part in the matchmaking event that take place under the India EU Trade and Technology Council here startups will be promoted correct new businesses will be coming up that will be promoting your battery recycling of electric vehicles. We know that electric vehicles demand is rising day by day. And as it will be rising day by day, more and more startups, more and more companies that needs to take care of electric vehicles will be coming up. And from that, one of the segment will be electric vehicle batteries, right? So in order to 
recycle those batteries because these batteries they consist of lithium ion right major majority of them consist of lithium ion so they need to be recycled for this this expression of interest was launched between eu and india this aims to promote cooperation between european and indian small and medium enterprises startups in the clean and green technology sector if we talk about this joint eu india match making event here eu india match making event will enable cooperation and partnership between solution providers from both the regions correct this event is scheduled to be held on in june 2025 correct it will be funded by eu and supported by the office of the principal scientific advisor to the government of india here event will provide platform for 12 startups from europe and six each six each to pitch their ideas correct that means six will be from europe and six will be india and their ideas that what should they do in order to recycle these electric vehicle batteries what should they do in order to come up with new technology that can help to mitigate the pollution reduce the pollution right so six startups each will be given their platform where they can pitch their ideas during this joint eu india match making event that will be held in june 2025 After pitching presentation, six finalists, that is three from EU and three from India, will be shortlisted, and they will be awarded with a visit to India and EU respectively to explore market opportunities with their counterparts, and then they can further make decisions that how can they should proceed ahead. If we look at some of the key points, the initiative will play an important role in advancing circular economies practices, achieving carbon neutrality goals of. goals of india and eu and it seeks to facilitate cooperation and explore potential trade opportunities customer relation investment avenues for short listed startups that are six three each three from india three for european union if we talk about india european union ttc this was announced by narendra modi our prime minister of india and ursula von der leyen president of european commission during their meeting held in april 2022 in new delhi this eu india ttc this is a collaboration platform that will address various features such as your trade technology security challenges how can we improve this trade between these two countries what are the challenges these two nations are facing and how can we improve the technology and also exchange the technology so that we both can become advanced this ttt consists of three working groups first is working group 1 on strategic technologies digital governance and digital connectivity second is on green and clean energy technology third is on trade investment and resilient value chains right take a note of this then if we talk about european union eu who is the president of european council charles michel right who is the president of european commission we just saw ursula von der leyen where is the headquarter of european union it is in brussels belgium there are 27 members in the european union and it was established in 1993 next next is qci they partnered with which ministry to improve cghs healthcare experience so qci that is your quality council of india they have partnered with ministry of health and family welfare correct and they have initiated a 5 year collaboration to transform this cghs scheme all right what is the cghs cghs is your central government health scheme this is provided to central government employees right it is kind of an insurance scheme correct or medical insurance scheme whenever they are having any medical issue they can directly go to these cghs related hospitals or hospitals that are providing this panel cghs and they can opt for a treatment free of cost also because they are government employees and they come under this cghs correct so for improving or providing better experience to providing the ecosystem to providing enhanced healthcare services to all the beneficiaries of cghs right QCI they partnered with Ministry of Health and Family Welfare this partnership will be for the next 5 years and in order to transform CGHS ecosystem right here you can see quality council of india and the ministry of health and family welfare they initiated a 5 year collaboration 
to transform CGHS ecosystem to enhance healthcare services for all the beneficiaries. This aims to deliver more robust, efficient, transparent CGHS system through a comprehensive approach that will address several key areas. If we look at some of the key points, here the main focus will be on providing better quality through systematic interventions, then supporting CHHS facilities in accreditation and capacitating healthcare providers means better quality of healthcare, better service to the customers, right? More and more new technology that can be incorporated and that can help those patients. Then emphasis is placed on leveraging technology for transformation and exploring additional initiatives. Crucial measures encompasses ensuring drugs and storage facility, right? These storage facilities are also important because if the drugs are not stored properly, then with the help of air, it can get oxidized and the right aim of that particular because when a chemical is oxidized, it becomes a different chemical, correct? So the medicine that was made for that purpose, if it gets oxidized, then the whole aim of that drug changes correct so we need to store the drugs properly for that ensuring that proper system proper infrastructure should be there so that drug storation can also be done right so these are the basic things that will be looked upon and if we talk about qci quality council of india who is the chairperson here jackshi shah where is the headquarter of qci it is in new delhi it was established in 1997 and what is the parent ministry of QCI? It is DP IIT that comes under the Ministry of Commerce and Internal Trade. What is DP IIT? Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. Moving on, next is Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. Correct, they have constructed 12,349 kilometer of national highways in the fiscal year 24. I repeat. Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, they constructed 12,349 km of national highways in fiscal year 24. And this is the second highest. This is the second highest ever so far. So I repeat, you can see Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, they made a total of or they constructed a total of 12,349 km of national highways in the financial year 24. This is the second highest figure in the history of the construction of national highways highways also the ministry also revealed that they have awarded 8851 national highway projects in fiscal year 24 and fy21 stands in first place with a length of 13327 kilometer of national highways this was the first correct now second highest you can see here correct that is 12000 349 kilometers second highest in fiscal year 24 first highest was fiscal year in 21 that is 13327 kilometer this was basically during covid 19 times and during covid 19 also the construction was at full pace right important take a note of this apart from this if we look at the pilot program for cashless treatment of road victim accidents right pilot program means this is launched on a trial basis Right? That means whenever there is a road accident correct, and the victims need treatment immediately, a cashless treatment can be provided to that victim. This initiative has been launched on pilot basis and pilot basis means on trial basis. So government of India launched a pilot program in March to provide cashless treatment to the victims of road accidents due to the use of motor vehicles. The aim here is to reduce the fatalities due to the road accidents by providing timely medical care including golden hour. Golden hour is the time period just after the accident has taken place because that time is considered to be as the most important time period. If in that time period any victim gets the right treatment, his or her life can be saved. Right? And this provides legal mandate under the section 162 of Motor Vehicles Act of 1988. If we look at some of the key features of this pilot program, the program was developed by Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways for the initial phase and it will be introduced in Chandigarh on pilot basis. Important. Direct question can be asked that in order to provide cashless treatment for road accident victims, pilot program was launched where? It was launched in Chandigarh. And victims are entitled to guess get cashless treatment of up to a maximum of 1.5 lakh rupees per person for a maximum period of seven days from the date of accident 
एप्लीकेबल टू ऑल द रोड एक्सीडेंट्स कॉज बाय एनी मोटर व्हीकल एंड हॉस्पिटल क्लेम्स द कंपनसेशन फ्रॉम द मोटर व्हीकल एक्सीडेंट फंड फॉर ट्रीटिंग पेशेंट्स करेक्ट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस देन हेयर ओनली द पैकेज फॉर द ट्रॉमा एंड पॉलीट्रॉमा विल बी ऑफर्ड अंडर आयुष्मान भारत प्रधानमंत्री जन आरोग्य योजना एंड द प्रोग्राम विल बी कैरिड आउट वाई एन आई टी प्लेटफॉर्म दैट कंबाइंस द फीचर्स ऑफ नेशनल हेल्थ अथॉरिटीज ट्रांजेक्शन मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम एंड मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट हाईवेज ई डिटेल अकाउंट रिपोर्ट अकाउंट एक्सीडेंट रिपोर्ट एप्लीकेशन मूविंग ऑन नेक्स्ट इज अकॉर्डिंग टू डब्ल्यू एच ओ विच इज द सेकेंड लीडिंग इन्फेक्शियस कॉज ऑफ डेथ ग्लोबली सो अ रिपोर्ट वॉज रिलीज बाई डब्ल्यू एच ओ रिसेंटली करेक्ट इट इज योर ग्लोबल हैपेटाइटस रिपोर्ट एंड एज द नेम सजेस्ट हैपेटाइटस इज कंसिडर्ड बाई डब्ल्यू एच ओ टू बी द सेकेंड लीडिंग इन्फेक्शियस कॉज ऑफ डेथ ग्लोबली राइट इफ वी सी डब्ल्यू एच ओ दे हैव रिलीज द रिपोर्ट दैट इज यू कैन सी हेयर ग्लोबल हैपेटाइटस रिपोर्ट ट्वेंटी फोर एक्शन फॉर एक्सेस इन लो एंड मिडल इनकम कंट्रीज एंड ड्यूरिंग द वर्ल्ड हैपेटाइटस समिट the right this report was released during the world hepatitis summit this world hepatitis summit correct remember this was organized by whom it was organized by world hepatitis alliance with the support of the ministry of health of portugal and where was this held location it was held in lisbon correct so 9 to 11th of april world hepatitis summit was held that was organized by world hepatitis alliance correct supported by ministry of health of portugal held in lisbon from 9 to 11th of april this is your world hepatitis summit then this was based on a theme that is integrate accelerate and eliminate this is the theme for the world hepatitis uh, world hepatitis summit correct so during this summit only this report was released and it stated that hepatitis is considered to be the second leading cause of death globally now here only what is a hepatitis basically hepatitis means inflammation of the liver correct the liver we know it is a very important part of our body correct it processes all the nutrients it filters the blood and fights infection whenever the liver is inflamed or damaged the functions can be affected and heavy use of alcohols toxins some medication and certain medical conditions can cause hepatitis however the hepatitis is caused by a virus and the most common types of hepatitis are hepatitis a b and c right now further if we talk about it you can see as per the report here there is an alarming increase in the deaths that are caused by viral hepatitis making it the second leading infectious cause of the death globally after tuberculosis claiming 1.3 million lives annually the next question can be asked is who prepared this report it was developed by who department of global hiv hepatitis and sti that is sexually transmitted infection programs jointly with the department of health product policy and standards that is hps department of immunization vaccines and biological and department of regulation and pre qualification these are the organization that together developed this particular report and what is in the report the report reveals various disparities in pricing service delivery and funding challenges alongside programs and gaps in diagnosis and treatment from 187 countries that means among the 187 countries the treatments are different right the service provided to different countries are different the pricing of the treatment can vary from country to country correct and there are funding challenges that can take place in various countries depending upon their situation depending upon their financial health and even depending upon whether the facility the technology is provided to them or not right and which covers six who regions that is african region eastern mediterranean region south east asian region region of america and western pacific region and european region apart from this if we we'll look at some of the viral hepatitis details viral hepatitis claims 1.3 million lives annually with 80 per 83% is related to hepatitis b and 17% related to hepatitis c and every day almost 3500 people are dying globally due to hepatitis b and c infections the report estimates in 2022 that almost 254 million had hepatitis b and 50 million had hepatitis c 
half of the burden is among those aged 30 to 54 with 12 percent in children under 18 and men make up 58 percent of the cases and rest 42 percent are of women then here only remember 10 countries that include bangladesh china ethiopia india indonesia nigeria pakistan philippines russian federation and vietnam they account for nearly two-thirds of the global burden of hepatitis b and hepatitis c for hepatitis b three countries china india and indonesia they represented 50 percent of the global burden and for hepatitis c six countries china india indonesia pakistan russian federation and us they represent 50 percent of the total cases correct next Next, if we look at some of the other key points, despite global prevention efforts, all the pro uh, methods, all the process that are being carried out in order to prevent deaths from hepatitis are rising due to inadequate diagnosis and treatment. Means the people who are those who are suffering from hepatitis, they are not diagnosed properly and they are even the treatment that are provided to them is not sufficient there should be a universal access to prevention by 2025 diagnosis and treatment is crucial in this case particularly in the 10 regions with the highest burden in the african region many countries don't buy affordable generic hepatitis medicines even though they are available because the pricing is very high and prices difference exists differently in different countries Next, what are the recommendations for accelerating hepatitis elimination? So there are some focuses and the aim here is to end the epidemic by 2030. Examples such as expand access to testing and diagnosis, more testing and diagnostics should be done, shifting focus from policies to implementation of equitable treatment, strength primary care prevention efforts, simplify service delivery and optimize product regulation and supply, develop investment cases in priority countries and mobilize innovative funding utilize improved data for action and engage affected communities and civil society advance research for improved diagnostic and potential cures for hepatitis hepatitis b moving on if we look at some of the related news recently who has recommended r21 matrix m the new malaria vaccine developed by jenner institute at oxford oxford university that is in uk and serum institute of india private limited leveraging the novavax adjustment technology for the prevention of malaria in children correct this is the name of the medicine r21 matrix m developed by jenner institute at oxford university and serum institute of india then world anti-doping agency wada and who they have inked a four-year MOU that enables experts from both global organizations to work together and exchange information concerning areas where the realms of anti-doping and public health interact. Right? So, first news is regarding malaria vaccine that is R21 matrix M. Second is about WADA and WHO. They signed an MOU so that the anti-doping can be increased. People should not take any doping methods correct together informations can be exchanged and all those participants they should be aware that taking drugs not just the people uh, not just the athletes but also the people should be aware that these drugs are harmful for the health next nps assets under management recorded 30.5 percent year-on-year growth in fiscal year 24 as per the data released by pfrda correct so as per pension fund regulatory and development authority the national pension system assets under management experienced 30.5 percent year-on-year growth during the fiscal year 23-24 reaching 11.73 lakh crore in fiscal year 24 from 8.98 lakh crore rupees in fiscal year 23 and this is a 27 percent year-on-year increase seen in nps assets in fiscal year 23 if we talk about fiscal year 24 we saw a increase of 30.5 percent here the growth is amid addition of 9.47 lakh new subscribers for non-government sector and the number of because we know that private companies they are providing more jobs right so they are also providing this nps correct so if any individuals or also any individual also wants to opt for this nps they can directly do so and that is the reason 9 point new like 9.4 lakh new subscribers from non-government sectors was here the number of the new government employees on board nps in fy24 stood at 7.10 
However, the growth is fell slightly short of the PFRDS target of 1 million for FY24 with an internal target of 13 lakh new subscribers. And as of March 2024, the total number of NPS and Atal Pension Yojana subscribers increased by 16.28% to 7.36 crore. Right? Here only, if we talk about some of the key points, the non-government sector that is corporate and retail, they witnessed 41.67% growth in the NSP assets. What is NSP assets we just saw now? NSP is your national pension system. Do remember this full form, correct? NPS, not NSP, NPS. NPS, national pension system, correct? Two, and here the non-government sector, that is your corporate and retail, they witnessed a 41.67% growth in NPS assets to 2.27 lakh crore, while the government employees, they, their assets grew by 28% to 9.05 lakh crore also the awareness campaign contributed to nps asset growth with equity asset consulting constituting 18 percent of the asset under management and a higher proportion in the retail and corporate segment and over 3000 additional corporates adopted corporate nps for their employees in fy24 now what is this pfrda we have been talking about starting of this information pfrda what is PFRDA? Basically, it is a regulatory body, correct? PFRDA was established by the Government of India on 23rd of August 2003, correct? And if we talk about this PFRDA, the main aim of this PFRDA is to develop and regulate the pension funds to promote the interest of the subscribers of pension fund, right? I repeat, basically to promote pension funds in India, right? To manage them. Correct to develop those pension fund and to regulate the pension funds and to protect the interest of the subscribers here. This is the main aim of PFRDA that is Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority. Correct. Next. Moving on. Next is Singapore Tourism Board and which organization signed a memorandum of understanding to promote UPI for Indians in Singapore? It is STB singapore tourism board and phone pay right these two organizations partner together to promote upi for indians in singapore correct take a note of this important here you can see singapore tourism board stb and they sign this mou with phone pay to promote the use of upi for indians traveling in singapore and this mou will allow the customers to instantaneously make cross-border transactions between india and singapore directly from their existing indian bank account right take a note of this and apart from this remember phone pay group is india's leading fintech company correct it is a flagship product and the phone pay digital payments app was launched in august 2016 remember when was phone pay app launched in 2016 apart from this remember as per the agreement between stb and phone pay Right, they would invest in joint marketing campaigns in Singapore and India to promote the destination's dynamic options, correct? So that better UPI experience can be provided in the various hotspots of tourism, right? Basically, tourism at tourism hotspots where the tourism likely used to visit or they likely to visit at those positions, as at those locations, better UPI service will be provided. These UPI mechanism so that the transfer of payment can be done easily will be provided. Next, next is your Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways. They have awarded Sagar Samman Awards on National Maritime Day 2024. I repeat, Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways, they awarded Sagar Samman Awards on National Maritime Day 2024. If we look at these, that on the uh, occasion of the 61st national maritime day that was observed on 5th of april the ministry of port shipping and waterways right they have awarded the sagar samman awards and it was acknowledging acknowledging the exemplary contributions within the maritime sector right if we look at these awards first right who are awarded so sagar samman varun award to Dhrendra Kumar Sanyal, it is the highest contribution for outstanding and sustained contribution to the Indian maritime sector. Then Sagar Samman Award for Excellence, it was awarded to Captain Kamal Khan Chaudhary and it recognizes the consistently excellent contributions to the maritime sector. 
देन सागर सम्मान अवार्ड फॉर गैलेंट्री हेयर कैप्टन सुबीर शाह एंड कैप्टन ओम दत्ता वॉज अवॉर्डेड एंड दिस वॉज दिस ऑनर्स द एक्ट्स ऑफ गैलेंट्री बाय इंडियन सी फ्रर्स एनकरेजिंग इमेल्यूशन ऑफ देयर एग्जैम्पलरी कंडक्ट Apart from this the award was presented during the event that was organized by National Maritime Day celebration at the Central Committee at Yash Yashwantrao Chavan Center and this Yashwantrao Chavan Center is at Nariman point that is in Mumbai Maharashtra so location has also been provided to us where was this award presented it was presented at the Yashwantrao Chavan Center that is in Nariman point in Mumbai Maharashtra and the award was presented during the event organized by National Maritime Day celebration here the observance of the National Maritime Day and when was your National Maritime Day observed on 5th of April the theme of this day was sustainable shipping opportunities and challenges i repeat sustainable shipping opportunities and challenges this is the theme for the national maritime day observed on 2024 next if we talk about this national maritime day this is observed annually across india on 5th of april and it is to commemorate the maiden voyage of the first indian owned vessel ss loyalty from mumbai to london in 1919 next next remember ins sharda awarded on the spot unit citation for 23 24 for anti piracy operation what is anti piracy operations these are the operations for which this ins sharda ship took part in this and in order to provide the pirates to take over any ship or the goods that are exported or imported correct so for this only remember admiral r hari kumar on his visit to southern naval command in kochi kerala who is our chief of naval staff awarded on the spot unit citation 2324 to ins sharda for successful conduct of the anti piracy operation the reason was as we say anti piracy operation this ship was involved in a safe release of 19 crew members among which 11 were iranian and 8 were pakistani right so it helped in the anti piracy operation for that only this ins was ins sharda was awarded with on the spot citation correct and remember the ship as we just say this was involved in the safe release of 19 crew member of an iranian fishing vessel that was umri what was the name of that fishing vessel from which these 11 iranian and 8 pakistani crew members were safe released it is umri correct and it is an iranian fishing vessel right these 19 crew members they were held hostage by the pirates of the coast of east of somalia right of the coast of of the uh, this was of the east coast of somalia where on the ship on the fishing vessel omari 19 members that included 11 iranian and 8 pakistani crew members were held hostage and ins sharda helped to release these members then if we talk about ins sharda correct it is a p55 right this is a sukanya class patrol vessel of the indian navy this was commissioned on 27th of october 1991 next appointments simon harris as you can see him in the picture has been elected as the new prime minister of ireland i repeat simon harris he has been elected as the new prime minister of ireland correct he is 37 years of age and question will be asked is he will succeed whom he will be succeeding leo varadkar direct question two questions he has been appointed as the new prime minister of which country ireland and he will be succeeding whom he will be succeeding leo varadkar correct apart from this remember he received the seal of the office from the president of ireland michael de higgins which officially installed as the tyosage on 9th of april 2022 and here you can see he succeeded leo varadkar apart from this with this Simon Harris became the youngest prime minister of the Republic of Ireland he is just 37 years of age and he is set to hold the post till general election which will be held in March 2025 next next is India's Jagjit Pawadia re-elected for the third term to the International Narcotics Control Board I and C B who has been re-elected for the third term 
टू आई एन सी बी इंडिया एज यू कैन सी हर इन द पिक्चर जगजीत पवादिया करेक्ट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन विल बी आस फर्स्ट थिंग देन रिमेंबर इंडिया जगजीत पवादिया वॉज रीलेक्टेड एज अ मेंबर ऑफ आई एन सी बी दैट इज इंटरनेशनल नार्कोटिक्स कंट्रोल बोर्ड फॉर द थर्ड टर्म फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव टू टू थाउजेंड थर्टी she previously served as the member of incb from 2015 to 20 then from 2020 to 2025 and now again she has been appointed for the third term from 2025 to 2030 also she has served as the president of incb from 2021 to 2022 right mark this take a note of this then if we talk about incb this is an independent and quasi judicial monitoring body for the implementation of united nations international drug control convention if we talk about jagjit pawadia she is a 1979 batch irs officer and she held various several senior positions in the government of india before the retirement in 2014 then she served as the narcotics commissioner of india at the central bureau of narcotics from 2006 to 12 then commissioner of legal affairs from 2001 to 2005 and central vigilance officer at the power finance commission a uh, power finance corporation from 1996 to 2001 If we talk about this International Narcotics Control Board remember this was established in 1968 with a single convention on narcotics drug in 1961 INCB in cooperation with the governments of all the countries ensure that the adequate supply of drugs are available for the medical and scientific use say for example during the covid 19 right this body maintains and ensures that the all the countries globally are getting the medicines for the treatment of covid 19 we are talking specifically about covid 19 time period right because we know during that time period the countries were facing the lack of medicines right it monitors the government's control over the chemicals used in the illicit manufacture of drugs and assist them in preventing the diversions of those chemicals into illicit traffic if we talk about the members of incb there are 13 members elected by the ecosoc body of un serving their capacity rather than as a government representatives then among the 13 members three with medical pharmacological and or pharmaceutical backgrounds are elected from a list of the nominees by who that means among the 13 3 are the medical pharmacological background or pharmaceutical backgrounds they are elected from the nominees by who and the rest 10 members are elected from the list of the nominees by the representative governments apart from this remember india was also elected as a member of the following un body and the commission on the status of women for the term 2025 to 2029 this is an important part take a screenshot of it just pause the video and take a screenshot for screenshot of it this will tell us india is a part of which of the following bodies right so for the commission on the status of women for the term 25 to 29 then executive board on unicef for the term 25 to 27 executive board on undp unfpa and UNOPS that is United Nations Office for Project Services for 25 to 27 then India is also on executive board of United Nations entity for gender equality and the empowerment of women for 25 to 27 on executive board of World Food Program for 25 to 27 correct take a note of this moving on next is US ISPF correct US ISPF the correct here us ispf appointed former revenue secretary tarun bajaj as the chair of us india tax forum here you can see tarun bajaj the former revenue and economic affairs secretary of the ministry of finance of the government of india he was appointed as the chair of the us india tax forum of the us india strategic partnership forum that is us ispf that is united states india strategic partnership forum here tarun bajaj he is a 1998 batch ias officer who retired from service in november 2022 he is also serving as independent director on the board of hindustan unilever limited since december 2023 he joined as an advisor to the board of directors of us ispf in january 2024 right take a note of this now this united states india strategic partnership forum right what are the ways we should promote our trade what are the ways we should tackle the terrorism going on then we should look after the 
technologies that will be taking part like how what are the strategies that both the countries together india and usa will be going ahead what are the things they should be aligning upon what are the things they do not align upon all will be catered here right and remember this us ispf this is a not for not for profit institution correct that is basically used or this us ispf basically this organization the main aim of this organization is to strengthen the partnership between india and usa next is science and tech tasl they have launched tset 1a that is india's first private sector built sub meter resolution earth observation satellite that is tata advanced systems limited launched tset 1a correct tset 1a this is india's first private sector built sub meter resolution earth observation satellite this was launched into low earth orbit correct and this tset 1a was launched using falcon 9 rocket of spacex it was launched from kennedy space center florida usa on 7th of april and it is one of the 11 satellites that was launched as a part of the bandwagon mission that bandwagon one mission that we discussed day before yesterday or yesterday right this tset 1a this weighs around 50 kg and it has around 0.5 to 0.8 meter resolution inherently which will be enhanced to 0.8 to 0.6 meter super resolution using software next is obutry nobel prize winning physicist peter higgs recently passed away as you can see him in the picture right nobel prize winning british physicist peter higgs passed away at the age of 94 in edinburgh uk he was born on 29th of may 1929 in newcastle upon tyne in uk right in 2015 he won the world's oldest scientific prize that is the royal society copley medal let me show you here in 2015 he won the oldest scientific prize that is royal society's copley medal for his work on the theory of higgs boson or the god particle in 2013 he was jointly awarded the nobel prize in physics with belgian physicist francis englert then the award was the for the theoretical discovery of the mechanism that contributes to our understanding of the origin of the mass of the subatomic particles apart from this in 2013 he received edinburgh medal of the edinburgh international science festival right let me show you here in 2013 he received edinburgh medal of the edinburgh international science festival correct and nonino that is the man of our time prize apart from this in 2004 he was jointly awarded the wolf prize in physics with robert brout and francis englert in 1997 in 1997 he was jointly awarded with the high energy and particle physics prize from the european physical society with robert brout and francis englert right so these are important medals awards of peter higgs who recently passed away next is world homeopathy day it is observed on 10th of april and it is to raise awareness about the homeopathy that is a therapeutic system of medicine its principles and the contribution to the global health care right world homeopathy day observed on 10th of april correct here see world homeopathy day it is commemorated on the birth anniversary of dr christian friedrich samuel heimann correct he is a german physicist and a chemist who is regarded as the founder of homeopathy so on his birth anniversary on that is on 10th of april we observe world homeopathy day this year it was 269th birth anniversary of dr christian friedrich samuel heinemann correct and the theme for the world homeopathy day is homo parivar one health one family right homeo parivar one health one family this is the theme for the world homeopathy day correct take a note of this and question can definitely be asked here is that on which date is observed on 10th of april right which birth anniversary was there this was the 269th birth anniversary of dr christian frederick then apart from this he was born on 10th of april 1975 in germany and dr christian frederick he was an acclaimed scientist great scholar and linguist in 1970 he translated william cullen's eight treatises on the materia medica from english to german 
Apart from this, if we talk about homopathy, homopathy is also known as homopathic medicine and it is derived from the Greek word homeo, which means similar and pathos, which means suffering. It does not use drugs or surgery. It is based on the principles of similia, similibus, cruentur. It means let likes be treated by likes. Right. So this is homopathy. Then if we talk about homopathy, homopathy came in India as early as 1810 when Dr. Samuel Heyman visited India and treated patients. The IU system of medicine included Indian systems of medicine such as Ayurveda, Yoga, Neuropathy, Yunani, Siddha, Rovas, Rigpa and homopathy. And the Ministry of Ayush was formed on 9th of April or 9th of November 2014 with a vision of revitalizing ancient medical wisdom and fostering the growth and dissemination of IU systems of healthcare. Then if we talk about the events in India on 10th of April, President Draupadi Murmu Ma'am inaugurated a two-day scientific convention that is on 10th and 11th of April at Yashobhumi Conventional Center in Dwarka, New Delhi. It is organized by Central Council for Research in Homeopathy that is an autonomous apex research organization that comes under the Ministry of Ayush. And the theme for the convention is Empowering Research, Enhancing Proficiency, a Homeopathic Symposium. Next is 59th Central Reserve Police Force Velour Day observed on 9th of April. Right. And this day is also known as Shorya Divas. It is annually observed across India on 9th of April to commemorate extraordinary valor displayed by the CRPF soldiers during the Battle of Sardar Post in the run of Kutch in Gujarat in 1965. And the day also honors the CRPF personals and pay tribute to the martyrs who lost their life in the line of duty. This year, it was the 59th CRPF Velour Day that was observed. Correct. And CRPF stands as the India's largest central armed police force that comes under the Ministry of Home Affairs. If we talk about the history of Velour, right, first of all, remember, it is the 59th CRPF Velour Day. If we talk about the history of the Velour Day on 9th of April 1965, Operation Desert Hawk was launched by the Pakistani army targeting the Sardar post. And in response, a small contingent of the 2nd Battalion of CRPF successfully fought and repulsed the attack of the Pakistani Brigade on Sardar post in run of Kutch in Gujarat. 34 Pakistani soldiers were killed and 4 were captured alive during the battle. And during the conflict, 6 CRPF men attained martyrdom. Right? Then if we talk about history of CRPF, it is one of the oldest central paramilitary forces established on 27th of July 1939 as a crown representative police. After independence, this force was renamed as the CRPF through Act of Parliament on 28th of December 1949. So friends, these were your important current affairs for the day. Now let's move to some important one-liners for 11th of April. EU and India partner to promote startup collaboration on recycling of electric vehicle batteries under TTC. QCI and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare partner to improve CGHS healthcare experience. Ministry of Road Transport Highways constructed 12,349 km of national highways in fiscal year 24, the second highest so far. WHO Global Hepatitis Report 24 was released and hepatitis is the second leading infectious cause of death globally. NPS assets under management recorded 30.5% year-on-year growth in FY24, according to PFRDA data. STB and PhonePay, they signed an MOU to promote the UPI use for India in Singapore, for the Indians in Singapore. And Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways awarded Sagar Samman Award on National Maritime Day 2024. INS Sarda awarded on the spot unit citation 2324 for anti piracy operations. Simon Harris elected as the new Prime Minister of Ireland. India's Jagjit Pavadia re elected for a third term to the International Narcotics Control Board. USISPF appointed former Revenue Secretary Tarun Bajaj as the chair of US India Tax Forum. TASL launched TSET 1A. It is one of the 11 satellites that was launched in the Bandwagon 1. And it is India's first private sector built sub meter resolution earth observation satellite. Then, Nobel Prize winning physicist Peter Higgs passed away. World Homopathy Day on 10th of April. And 59th Central Reserve Police Force Velour Day observed on 9th of April. So, this was your session, friends. If you like the video, do hit the like button and comment below and let us know what are your views for the same. 
नेक्स्ट लेट्स मूव टू सम रिविजन पार्ट दैट विल बी बेनिफिशियल फॉर योर लर्निंग नेक्स्ट इन फेब मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पार्लियामेंट्री अफेयर्स ऑनर्ड द विनर्स ऑफ द सिक्सटीन नेशनल यूथ पार्लियामेंट कॉम्पिटिशन फॉर यूनिवर्सिटीज इन कॉलेज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी विच यूनिवर्सिटी रिसीव द रनिंग शील्ड एंड ट्रॉफी फॉर स्टैंडिंग फर्स्ट एट द नेशनल लेवल इट इज सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ पंजाब करेक्ट सो दे सिक्योर द टॉप पोजिशन हेयर एंड द अवार्ड्स वर प्रजेंटेड बाई अर्जुन राम मेघवाल जी राइट एंड द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सेंट्रल पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी दैट इज इन भटिंडा पंजाब रिसीव्ड द रनिंग शील्ड एंड अ ट्रॉफी फॉर स्टैंडिंग फर्स्ट एट द नेशनल लेवल नेक्स्ट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग पर्सनैलिटीज हैव बीन रिसेंटली अवॉर्डेड विद द फिफ्टी एथ ज्ञानपीठ अवार्ड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री सो हु इज दैट पर्सनैलिटी हु आर दे जगदगुरु राम भद्राचार्य एंड संपूरन सिंह कारला these are the two individuals for sanskrit and urdu language that were awarded with the 58th gyanpeet award 2023 correct this was which edition 58th edition of gyanpeet award then for urdu language sampurnan singh karla and for sanskrit jagadguru uh, jagadguru ram bhadracharya was awarded and this is for the second time given for the sanskrit language and this is for the fifth time given for the urdu लैंग्वेज राइट एंड संपूरन सिंह कारला ऑल्सो फेमस बाय द नेम गुलजार नेक्स्ट हु हैज रिसेंटली बिकेम द फर्स्ट वीमेन टू बी ऑनर्ड विद द घनश्याम दास बिरला अवार्ड फॉर साइंटिफिक रिसर्च आदिति सेन दे राइट शी हैज बीन अवॉर्डेड द थर्टी थर्ड घनश्याम दास बिरला अवार्ड दैट इज जी डी बिरला अवार्ड दिस वॉज द थर्टी थर्ड एडिशन ऑफ दिस अवार्ड एंड दिस अवार्ड इज गिवन इन द फील्ड ऑफ साइंस करेक्ट एंड शी बिकेम द फर्स्ट वीमेन साइंटिस्ट टू बी अवॉर्डेड विद दिस जी डी बिरला अवार्ड एंड दिस अवार्ड इज गिवन इन द फील्ड ऑफ साइंटिफिक रिसर्च राइट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस एंड ऑल्सो रिमेंबर शी वॉज ऑल्सो द फर्स्ट वीमेन हु वॉज अवॉर्डेड विद शांति स्वरूप भटनागर प्राइज फॉर साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन करेक्ट हु वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट आदिति सेन दे करेक्ट नेक्स्ट नाउ फ्रेंड्स लेट्स मूव टू सम ओके वन मोर क्वेश्चन दिस इज योर होमवर्क हु हैज बीन रिसेंटली कन्फर्ड विद द शेवलियर दे लीजन दे ऑनर दैट इज द नाइट ऑफ द लीजन ऑनर दैट इज द हाइएस्ट फ्रेंच सिविलियन अवार्ड डू कमेंट बिलो दिस इज योर होमवर्क राइट नाउ लेट्स मूव टू सम स्पोर्ट्स क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट who has recently won the first master title by defeating grand master gukesh d of india in the finals of the 86th edition of the tata steel chess tournament so v yi of china correct won the first master title by defeating grand master gukesh d of india in the finals and this was the 86th edition of the tata steel chess tournament correct where was this held this was held in the netherlands and it was from 12 to 28th of january we saw this event next next remember grand master ramesh babu pragnanda that is r pragnanda he became the india's number 1 chess player correct question can be asked who is the india's number 1 chess player so r pragnanda is the number 1 chess player of india next Which state has topped the medal tally of sixth edition of Khelo India Youth Games 2023 with 158 medals in Jan 2024? So it is Maharashtra state, right? They have topped the medal tally for the sixth edition of the Khelo India Youth Games with a total of 158 medals that were held in January 2024. So Maharashtra topped here with 158 medals. Among these, 57 were gold. Forty-eight silver and fifty-three bronze. Correct. And remember, here Tamil Nadu secured the second position, and then it was Haryana that secured the third position, respectively. And there was a mascot for these Khelo India Youth Games, the sixth edition of Khelo India Youth Games. What was the mascot here? Mascot was Veera Mangai. Veera Mangai. Next question can be asked: the location where they were held, they were held in Tamil Nadu. Next, 
नेम द स्पोर्ट्स पर्सनैलिटी हू हैज़ बीन रिसेंटली सेलेक्टेड एज द टॉर्च बियर टू टेक पार्ट इन द पेरिस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर ओलंपिक टॉर्च रिले सो अभिनव बिंद्रा ही विल बी आर टॉर्च बियर इंपॉर्टेंट टेक अ नोट ऑफ इट राइट ही इज़ अ वेरी फेमस इंडियन शूटर करेक्ट ही वन गोल्ड मेडल इन द बीजिंग ओलंपिक गेम्स इन टू थाउजेंड एट एंड ही हैज़ बीन सेलेक्टेड एज द टॉर्च बियर टू टेक पार्ट इन द पेरिस ओलंपिक्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर Which state government has recently launched the logo, anthem, mascot, jersey, and torch of the fourth edition of Khelo India University Games 2023? So, which is that state government? It is Assam state government. They launched the logo, anthem, mascot, jersey, torch of the fourth edition of Khelo India University Games. Right? And what is the mascot here? Mascot. It is a butterfly. That is Ashta. Lakshmi. Next is our homework section. First is what kind of satellite is T Sat One A recently seen in news? We just saw this. Second, which country has been introduced in a new gold bag currency ZIG? We also did this yesterday. Third, recently which organization recommended imposing a an anti dumping duty on sodium cyanide? Fourth, which country has invoked the peace clause for rice at the World Trade Organization? So friends that's all for the day friends i hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the youtube channel as well as apart from youtube channel you can go and follow us at affairs cloud telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773362 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official in the end friends if you use a code that is vikas10 you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code vikas10 also if you have any problem regarding the course purchase any problem regarding to our application you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862 and if you want to mail us you can also mail us on support@affairscloud.com and i assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue 